Hello, welcome back. Um, so let's get moving. We're starting off exactly where we left. And uh, you guys will probably be delighted to know, those who are following along, that even though I could spend probably hours playing with a silly flashing light on a chip, um, I know you guys are itching to actually build something. So this is going to be the last one before we start adding on to our breadboard. Um, we'll, uh, we'll jam as much as we can into this 15 minutes and, uh, you know, go from there. Um, so, we left it as we've created this delay function, and you can see the light, although again, the frame rate on my camera makes this look funny, but it should be flashing faster and slower and faster and slower. And it would be nice to actually see those numbers get displayed. We want this chip here, our, our Teensy, to send signals to our computer so that we can actually see the output. Okay? That is really easy with these things. All we have to do is open up a serial port, a serial communication port. And to do that, you just type in serial.begin. Okay? We should throw in, or we have to throw in, the um, baud rate. There are lots of baud rates available. Uh, 9600 is a nice, user-friendly, stable baud rate I've never had a problem with. Uh, so let's say we're going to start a serial port in our comments. Okay? To print, it's as easy as that. All we have to do is go down here, and let's say we want to print the value of delay. So we just type in serial.print, and in parentheses, the delay. How easy is that, huh? And we're going to copy it because we do have two for loops. All right. And uh, this is going to work. And uh, But I can tell you now you're not going to be happy with it. And on, you'll see why in a moment. But it'll work. So let's load it up. And we open up the serial window by either going here to Tools and going to Serial Monitor. Or, which I'll do this time, but from now on, I'm going to just hold down the Control Shift and M keys. I much prefer using the keyboard than going up here. And voila! We have a lot of numbers spitting out. And uh, maybe you guys are really good at parsing these in your head, but to me, this is just one long, nasty string I can't make any sense of. It would be nice if we had these numbers on individual lines. Okay, so we can actually read it. That is really easy to do as well. So instead of just putting in serial print, you put an LN at the end of the print. So serial print LN, new line, and LN, new line. And let's load it up. And let's take a look. Control Shift M. And voila! See, now we can actually see it. Watch it get slow. Watch it get faster. Faster, faster, faster. Slower, slower. And it works perfectly. It's exactly what we want. It would be nice, perhaps, if we could have a separation between these two uh, for loops. So we put a gap in here. Okay. Well, that's real easy, too. Let's just put in a dead space. Let's just put in serial. Uh, dot print. We'll throw it on a new line. And if we want to do text, uh, you just put in quotes. So actually, I'm going to quote nothing at all. I'm just going to put in a dead space. And close that up. Oh, I read it that looking for the semicolon. Okay. And let's copy and paste that down here. Notice how I put it outside the for loops. I want it to print all the numbers, then give me a space. Then go to the next for loop, print all the numbers, give me a space, and then loop back. Alright, so let's watch it again. And control shift M. And look at that. Perfect. Okay. Now we got a space, so it's easy to see the two different for loops. Alright. I could even do something like this. Let's put in um, end of first for loop. Okay. 
And let's put in here end of second for loop. Putting lots of capitals for some reason. Okay, it's in quote, looks blue. Let's load it up. Control Shift M. And look at that. Now you can actually see the separation spelled out right for you. End of second for loop. End of first for loop. All right. Now, the next thing, watch this again. Let's just load this up. I want you to pay attention to something. Okay, we're loading a new piece of code. You can see my lights go off and immediately start. That program is running really fast, especially in these processors here. So if I actually wanted to get values off before I was able to quickly move down and hit Control Shift M, my program could have actually run through before I even got there. Okay, so it would be sure nice to have the chip holding off and waiting until my window is open. Okay, that's really easy to do too, as you probably figured out. What we do is we go back up here to the setup, and what we want to do is we want to create a while statement. While it's not open, let's just wait. Okay, let's just run a loop. So that would be a while. So you get a new term. Uh, while uh, exclamation point is not. While it's not serial, okay, we are just going to uh, get a loop until you open up that port. Now, a colleague of mine puts, oops, I can type better than me, uh, puts in a little delay here which I think makes sense, and we'll go ahead and do it. We're going to put a little delay in there to give it a chance for the uh, serial port to actually fully initialize. Um, so we're going to wait. Oh, where's my comment lines? Here we go. Wait for window to open, and and we're going to give a chance for initialization. Okay. So in other words, 100 milliseconds gives you is a response time before the window to actually open and you see the first piece of data. We can play with that and I'll show you what I mean. So let's load that up. Okay. So currently, this code is stuck here in the setup. It's actually stuck right here. The chip is running this while statement. I'm going to hit Control Shift M, and it begins. Okay, 100 milliseconds later. Watch this. Let's take and make this a thousand. Let's say, for example, you uh, have a difficulty focusing, and you need your reading glasses, and you actually have to find time to grab them before it actually so you can read the screen. Okay, so let's do it. It is now waiting. Control Shift M, and it waits one second, and then it goes. Okay, let's make that even longer so you can really appreciate it. Even though you're going to get bored, let's make it five seconds. Control Shift M. Now you have a chance to drink some coffee, and then it begins. Okay, so this is a great way to give yourself an opportunity to set it up so you can actually use it. I'm going to bring that back down to 100 milliseconds because that's plenty of time for me. All right, we've got uh, four minutes left. Uh, let's play with something else real quick. Um, I'll save this one. Actually, I'm going to do that right now. We're going to save as, and believe it or not, I'm going to save it as this one because I miswrote that. Yes. Okay. So we've got our serial data in there. And let's play for a couple of minutes. I want to show you why I could spend hours doing this. Let's make this, instead of it being in a nice column, let's make it sort of graphical. Let's make it put in the number of spaces in the text so we see it go in and out and in and out so we can actually sort of almost plot it in, in text. Um, to do that, what we want to do is create a for loop that gives us a number of spaces. Um, notice here, 
we have this variable delay, which is way up on top, and it's available everywhere. We're now going to create, I'm going to show you how to make a local variable. So let's do for, uh, let's make a variable. Let's call it integer equals to, um, I'm sorry, integer x, I'm get myself confused, is equal to mm, 200. No, delay. What am I doing? We want to equal to that. Okay. And we want it to be go down to x is greater than 0. Okay, And let's bring it down. So that's going to be an x minus minus. So we're going to reduce it by 1 every cycle. And don't forget, for loops have their own brackets. I'm actually going to tab that in. And what did I say we want to do? We want to put in some spaces. Dot we don't want new lines, we want to push it over to the right. So let's say serial print, and let's just put in a dead space. Oops. Okay, and then I'm gonna tab that over. And you know what, I'm gonna get rid of this. All right, so now I'm gonna copy this, Control C. I'm gonna put it right below here. I'm going to get rid of that so we don't see that. And let's load it, see what happens. Control Shift M. Oh, look at that. Boy, that's that's a big that's hard to see. Let's let's make this. Let's make it so it doesn't go 200 spaces. Um, let's make it so we would stick between 100 and oh greater than 10 let's bring that down to yeah i'll leave it there okay and 100 okay so now this shouldn't go up to 200 milliseconds we should only go down to 100 milliseconds so we should only have 100 dead spaces in our loop Control shift m oh look at that how cool is that Now let's uh, let's play with a little bit more. Let's um, hmm. we can throw a little math in there. Let's see if we can get it tighter. Let's just let's just take those values and divide them by two. Right right here in the in the for statement. Okay, and that way it'll make it tighter. I hope. Push it down. Oh look at that! That is so cool. Let's. Uh, Let's uh, let's get rid of the uh, let's put a character in here instead of the numbers. Although the numbers are kind of cool, let's put in um, let's put in a uh, pound sign. Okay, and how about this? We'll go while it's going up, it's doing pounds, and while it's down, it's doing uh, stars. Let's try that. Control shift. Mm -hmm. Wow. How cool is that? So you see how I could spend a long time just playing with the just a chip and a cable. Alright. But we're not going to. We're gonna move on. However, before I'm gonna allow you to move on, I have some homework for you. Okay? What I would like you to do is don't move on unless you can't even see my code. Um, unless you can generate this code by yourself. All it's going to do is count down 10 and then it flashes 10. Okay? And if you can't figure it out, now it's actually just going to loop again. If you can't figure it out, uh, I'll create an obnoxiously long video to help explain it, but I want you to do it on your own. There's only 15 seconds left, so I'm going to wrap it up, and I'll see you next time where we actually start building onto the breadboard. I'll talk to you soon.